for the last 30 years, my identity has been Undertaker. The Phenom. The Dead Man. The American Badass. And the Taker of Souls. Tonight, I'm going to take you behind the curtain and meet the man under the black hat, Mark Calloway. Now, it could have been really easy for me to keep Mark Calloway hidden until the day that I die, but I wanted to show each and every one of you the same respect that you've shown me for so many years. I love this business with all my heart, but it, but it doesn't come without sacrifice. Sacrifice in the form of family, health, and privacy. I wouldn't be where I am today without all the people, not only that helped me in the ring, but outside of it. So WWE Universe, my first thank you is to you. You are loyal, you are passionate, and you guys were the motivation that I needed on many nights to get up off of the training room table, work my way down here to the ring, push through the pain, and perform. So, tonight isn't just about me. It's about each and every one of you. I'm going to share with you something that my brother once shared with me. It's 1986, and I'm about 20 years old. I'm sitting in his living room, and I'm staring at the floor. I'm about a semester away from college graduation, and I'm conflicted and miserable. I say, David, I, I, I don't know what to do. I say, I, I don't I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh. Do I do I graduate? Do I go overseas and try and play pro basketball? I don't, I mean, I don't know what to do. See, I, the decision, it seems impossible. See, I'd spent the last 10 years consumed with playing basketball. And to be quite frank with you, my opportunities after college are pretty promising. At the same time, basketball isn't what I want to do. My heart is already into wrestling. Now, sh now sure, I just, I just started my wrestling training, but I already know this is what I want to do with my life. But I also know that my teammates are going to be disappointed, and I don't even want to begin to think about what my parents are going to say.
my brother David comes and he, he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, Mark, he says, you can't live your life for what mom and dad want you to do. And you can't live your life for what your teammates want you to do. Here it is. He says, you can't live your life for anyone other than you. It was in that moment that everything become crystal clear. No matter what it took, I was going to become a professional wrestler. Was it glamorous? Not unless you consider living in your car, busting heads in bars, and not knowing whether or not you're going to have enough money to eat that day. It wasn't anything close to glamorous. But let me tell you what it was. It was the only way that I was going to find my true identity. You see, I respected my parents so much, I didn't want to disappoint them. But that being said, I couldn't live my life for what my parents wanted me to do. I had to, I had to go after my own identity, face my own failures, be accountable for my own actions, and chase my dreams without fear of what other people thought. My dreams led me to become The Undertaker. Now you all know my signature moves, last ride, old school, the tombstone. But tonight, I'm going to reveal some of my mental signature moves. And because we can't live our life for anybody other than ourselves, hopefully one, maybe all of these will help you find your tr true, your true identity as well, just like it did for me, thanks to the WWE. Now, unfortunately, one of the earliest and most significant lessons I learned came from Vince himself, AKA the boss. We <laughs> We were in Rochester, New York, doing TV. This is early on in my career. And I'm working a squash match, excuse me, an enhancement match. So I'm working an enhancement match with this local kid who won, is probably more nervous than I can even imagine. Two, probably getting his one shot on TV. And three, he's probably doing the best that he can. But none of that's running through my mind as he just screws up one of my patented moves after another. And I noticeably start roughing him up. Now I, as I storm back to the curtain after the match, there stands Vince. And I can tell by the look on his face, he isn't there to tell me what a great job I just did. He walks up to me, and he looks me in the eyes, and he goes, Mark, perception is reality. And the reality is that everybody out there in that arena and everyone here backstage thinks you're an asshole. <laughs> and in that moment, I knew he was right. You see, I wouldn't, <laughs> you know what? I don't know if any of you may have seen that match. I mean, most of you probably weren't even born yet. <laughs> but if you, if you had seen it, you may have formed an opinion about me right then and there. See, I'm not proud of my actions that night. 
And I had to learn the hard way that perception really is reality. And this became my first, my first mental move. Throughout the rest of my career, I constantly reminded myself, no matter whether I was in the ring or I was outside, my actions matter. <laughs> you know, when I think of perception, I can't help but think of Stephanie McMahon. Now, now, she's not nearly a big a brat as you think she is off screen. She's actually a lot bigger. I've often, I've often thought of Steph as the little sister I never wanted. Well, I guess I'm stuck with you. In all seriousness, you know how much I love you and your family. And speaking of siblings I never wanted, I didn't forget about Shane. From, from driving me and the Godfather around from city to city, wondering why he had to wear his sunglasses at 2 a.m., to pestering me nonstop about the ridiculously insane bumps that he wanted to take in his matches. He wore me out. And speaking of Godfather. You know, you know, I've often referenced the two main male influences in my life outside of my dad. Now I need to clarify something. I never said you were a positive influence, <laughs> but an influence nonetheless. We've been friends for over 30 plus years. We've drank gallons of Jack Daniels. And we have fought each other over hats, watches, and just about anything you can imagine. But the reality is, I always knew you had my back. <laughs> and when I, when I think about somebody having my back, I cannot not think of these guys. The BSK. <laughs> Boys, you know I'm going to take the stories to the grave with me. But I hope each and every one of you know how much I love you. The late, great Yokozuna and co-founder of the BSK. We shared many memories inside the ring, but my fondest memories happened outside the ropes. Traveling up and down the roads, drinking whiskey and playing dominoes. Who would have known that those three things would be the beginning of a forever brotherhood? <clears throat> Brian Crush Adams. Another brother taken way too soon.